This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. I'm Mike Keith welcoming you to the Bet MGM studio and a special OTP today as we welcome Titans rookie quarterback, Will Levis. Will, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so has any part of the entire last eight months, including the football season, gone as you would have expected it to back when you got drafted? Oof. No, I mean, I tried not to have any uh, expectations. You know, I, I, I had a mindset of not letting the circumstances and, you know, whether personal or team or everything affected how I came into the building and worked every day. So, um, you know, there's always going to be those things that you can never expect. And there's been a lot of those things happen, but I feel like I've kept the right mindset to just be able to roll through them and um, come out, you know, on top. Here's something I wonder about quarterbacks, every one of them. When you get drafted, do you expect to come in and be the starter mentally? Yeah, I think you got to prepare that, that way regardless. It doesn't matter where you're drafted. I think you got to prepare as if you are the starter and uh, you're going in there and doing whatever you can as a teammate to be ready for when your name is being called. Um, some guys, it's a little more immediate and obvious if, you know, if you're a top 10 pick or whatever. Um, but, you know, for me, it was a, a little bit of a different situation because I was kind of right on that um, fringe of where I was picked. But also with, you know, Ryan being here and someone who's, who's won a lot of games for, for this team, I knew that I was going to come in and just be the best teammate I could for him and everyone else. But at the same time, uh, prepare and be ready for when my name was called. You know, one of the worst questions that's asked in these wrap-up interviews is what part of the job of being an NFL quarterback have you learned now that you didn't know coming in? It's a terrible question. It's just cliche. So what part of the job of being an NFL quarterback did you learn during the course of this process that you didn't know? I would just say how much information is needed. I mean, I, I'd like to think that I'm a good learner and that I'm able to um, hold a lot of information. Um, and I knew it was going to be an uptick from what I had to do in college. Um, but it, it, it far exceeded, you know, uh, what I expected, and, and I embraced it. And, uh, you know, I worked hard to make sure that I was able to go onto the field and have all the right things going on in my mind while at the same time simplifying it and not, um, you know, going too crazy. So it's a lot. It's a lot. It's the toughest job in sports, i got to say. Um, I'm, I'm obviously biased, but um, it's been a blessing to be able to just learn and, and develop throughout this year. I would think part of the blessing is at Penn State and at Kentucky, you go to school the whole time. You're having to quarterback a team. You play for some really good coaches and really good systems. You were about as ready as you could be, though, right? Yes, I think everything that led up um, to my the beginning of my professional career uh, in college helped me a lot. And my time at Penn State to Kentucky, um, I was surrounded by a lot of great coaches, a lot of great teammates that was able to you know, cultivate me and make me into the player and person I am today. Um, and then on the football side too, just especially there that last couple of years in Kentucky, I definitely played in a type of offense where at least the stuff on us at the quarterback position um, was a little bit closer than I think that a lot of quarterbacks in college uh, had to, to what we do here in the NFL. So that, that was really cool. And I feel like that helped my transition a lot. You, you had six months from the time you were drafted till you started your first game. When you were told after London that you were gonna become the starter, what did you have to shift in terms of how you did your day-to-day -day job? Yeah, I think it's still something that I'm, you know, trying to tweak and understand. Uh, next year, my, my routine is going to be a lot different than it was th uh, this year. And um, it, it definitely was just taking an uptick in my preparation. And uh, I, I was preparing, um, you know, how I thought I needed to to, to to be the starter if my name was called before then. Um, but I definitely, when, when that happened, you know, all right, time to go. Like, let's let's figure out a few things throughout the week that I can kind of add to my routine to just get me even that much more ready. Overall, that Atlanta game couldn't have gone much better. Have you, have you ever had a first start at any other level that went that well? No, I mean, that was one of those games where just like all things were clicking and everything in the game plan, you know, the shots that we were dialing it up, uh, they were there and the balls were there and the guys were in the right spots and they made the catches. And when, when all that clicks, it's a beautiful thing. Um, but, you know, we, that type of game, we know that we're able to, to do that and, and we're, we're still looking to kind of have a, a, si a similar game to that in the past game. So um, just trying to develop and, and hopefully uh, 
have a good feeling about where we are as an offense going into next year after these last couple games? Well, it was obvious that you checked yourself right after that game. You knew every game wouldn't go that smoothly, and you handled it that way. What in your training led you to know to do that, or did somebody else help to kind of make sure that you did that? Yeah, I think that there's been a lot of people throughout my athletic career that have helped me just with my mental and, and, and with my emotions, especially I think when I was a younger, you know, a more immature uh, player, I would let bad things affect me. I'd let good things affect me. And you got to be able to keep in that neutral space that we talk about. And, uh, you know, I got to thank the coaches here in this building for being those guys for me uh, right now. And Coach London, Coach Kelly, and, and that we meet with every day in the quarterback room. Um, they do a good job on the sideline as well, just making sure that I'm getting back to neutral and that I'm just taking every play um, as seriously and with the same mindset as the last. You talked about that in training camp some, that you were working with, I forget how you said it, like mental coaching, that you, after practice, you would do some things to let the bad plays go because that was something you wanted to get better about leading into your pro career. Explain that and t talk about what you've done with that mental sort of part of the game and the coaching and the training you get. I think it's just reaffirming with myself that you know, bad things are going to happen. And you turn on any game in the NFL, bad things are going to happen. You know, best, the best team in the league is going to have a three and out. The best offense in the league is, is going to have turnovers. And once you accept that and realize that it's just more about how you respond and, and how you're able to overcome those things, you stop fretting about it. So the more ball I watch, the more I understand the game, the more I realized how small a mistake is in the scheme of things. Um, and the more I just mature, I think I'm able to be able to handle those situations and move on from them better. You have touched on your relationship with Charles London. What has he meant to you in terms of the development through the course of this year? He's meant a lot. I mean, he, he said, I talk to him more than my mom and dad. You know, he, he's in here every day with us, making sure that we're on, we're on our P's and Q's and we know what's expected of us at the quarterback position. And um, I mean, at the very least, he's, he's getting us out there ready to, to know what our keys in on our plays. And then on top of that, like I said, just keep my mental right and, and him as he's been able to understand me and, and how my brain ticks. Um, I'm just grateful to have him as someone who can just keep my mind right and ready um, in those pressure situations. Here's something I've wondered since you got drafted. We knew here in Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, even if we're not involved in the draft room and things like this, we had a pretty big feeling that they would try to take you because the Titans really, really liked Will Levis. What do you think they got right about you that allowed them to push forward in that way, make the connection, and then put you in a position to be successful as a rookie? I think they just saw my competitiveness, um, my drive, uh, my spirit. I think maybe some other teams might not have seen that or, I guess, misconstrued or misunderstood kind of the, the vibe I was given off, maybe, I don't know. But I'm glad that the, the Titans were able to see kind of my true, true me. Uh, the tape speak, speaks for itself, obviously. They, they liked what I do as a player at the bare minimum, um, obviously. But it, I think they just saw through and realized who I am as a person and that uh, I'm a dude that um, they'd like to have in this locker room. Yeah, you, they dug in on you. They really got to know you. Is that fair to say? For sure. Yeah, I mean, they, they checked all the boxes. They, they visited with me more than anybody else. I, I had as many meetings with them um, as a lot of other teams combined, you know. So I knew that they were interested and they wanted to, you know, poke and prod and understand me at a deep level, which I thought was really great because um, they, you know, were taking me seriously and, and they wanted me to potentially be here as a, as a guy that could lead this team. I've got to remind the OT people that SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to the Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. Now, certainly who understands you the best is your family. You have a tight-knit family. We've seen them. Since you've become the starter, they are... They are, there they are, as a matter of fact, 35 people at a game, all of those people here to see you. Um, they get to watch you. What does it mean to you to get to watch them a little bit in action while you're in action? Oh, that's awesome. But I just, <laughs> I love, I mean, I, it, it's important for me to take a step back and realize um, what I've been able to do, not only for myself, but for my family. And um, I just love sharing these experiences with them and 
my mom gets just as fired, fired up as I do for game day. And, uh, my, Worse my than siblings, your dad? Yeah, my dad is a lot more nonchalant. My mom is, is fiery, and she, she could be a, a wreck sometimes. But this year she's been able to keep, a, keep her cool a little more. Um, but I think back as recently to this Christmas and playing here, I was able to you know, have a home base for our family to come here and, and celebrate Christmas with each other cousins came down, my grandma came down with all our grandkids, and that really kind of put things into perspective and made me think about just everything that's led up to this point, all the people that have helped me and, uh, and loved me and allowed me to put myself in this position. And uh, I gotta just say I love them so much and can't thank them enough. Good pictures to see them. Yes. All right, um, your draft class. All of you have played extensively, even some undrafteds that came in with you. How close are you guys as a group? Yeah, I'd say I'm definitely closest with the, the group that I trained with pre-draft, so uh, we had a good group out there um, with me, Dorian Thompson Robinson, Max Duggan, Hennon Hooker, and Clayton Toon. So uh, a few of those dudes have been able to, to play this year, and it's been cool to go out there and see them take the field. And uh, it, I feel like we're tight, and we, we got along so well because, you know, we're one of the couple hundred, you know, people, professional quarterbacks, or at least aspiring professional quarterbacks uh, around the country that understands, you know, the pressure and, I guess, the expectations that are on us. and. Uh, at the very least, we were all good dudes, and we all just got to, uh, hung out and um, spent a lot of great time together. But I mean, I got all the respect in the world for anyone who plays this position, and I definitely have a tighter bond um, and feeling for those dudes who are going out there and doing it for the first time, like I was this year. What about your Titans draft class? Oh yeah, we got a tight class, and I think you know, as people have seen, a lot of guys that have already contributed and, and, and shown that they're going to be good players for this team for for a little bit now. And um, we, as soon as we got drafted, we all got you know put together in a group, and, and we, we were talking and getting ready. And even before we stepped on the field uh, for OTAs here, we we made sure to get together and, and understand each other as a group, uh, as players and as people. Um, that week leading up to when we all got here, but I mean, this is the the front office did a great job of picking not only a great group of players, but just a great group of dudes. Tajay Spears was miked in the Miami game, and so we got to see your interactions with him and the interaction afterwards where you were being interviewed on national television. You guys have a pretty special relationship already, don't you? Yeah, I mean, he's just, he brings the juice, he brings the energy, um, and, and I love that, and I feed off of it, and, and, and so does everyone else in the offense. And he's a dynamic player that, you know, we just love watching to have the ball in his hands, um, and just a great person too. But he's a great leader, um, he's able to bring others up with him, but I do have to say, pretty disappointed he didn't tell me that he was mic'd up that game <laughs> or anybody else. That's, that's a major fine in, in this building. What are you going to get out of him? Nothing. I mean, I think we, we let it slide, but next time you just got to make sure that you tell the guys. <laughs> that's good. Do you have your off-season mapped out yet, football and training-wise and sort of life-wise, because you're an adult now, you don't have to go to class, you've, you've got an opportunity to go see some places and do some things. No doubt, I mean, this has been the longest year of my life, that's for sure, and I think any rookie will tell you that. I mean, the second you finish that last bowl game, if you're playing it or whatever, you know, you start your draft prep training, some guys do the senior bowls, you know, there's the combine if you're invited, there's the whole pre-draft process with the visits, the pro days, and you're literally getting on a flight that next week after getting drafted to wherever, uh, you know, you get chosen, and you're starting off right there. I could count on, you know, one hand how many times that I feel like I've been able to let loose and have a little fun over the last year. And, um, you know, it's been, it'll be nice to have a little bit of time to decompress and then get back on the roll. But we do have our trip with the O-line to Vegas like about a week after the season, so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, but other than that, you know, just making sure I'm getting my body right and, uh, and ready to get back here in April uh, for OTAs. Seems like that trip to Vegas is going to cost you a lot of money. Ooh, uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't talked about how it's going to be all divvied up, but I'm, I definitely am not afraid to um, spend when it's, you know, with this group of guys, special dudes and um, when we're able to finally, you know, have a little fun. All right, so we're going to take a quick break from the interview and do something kind of cool. You're going to call Doug and Lisa Brace in Franklin. What are you going to do for them? I'm going to tell them that their season tickets are on the house next year. So That's awesome. Yeah. All right, let's dial them up. Let's do it. Hello. Hey, Lisa. Hi. How you doing? This is Will Levis. Good, how are you? I, I am doing just fine. We just finished up practice here. I wanted to call in first, say thank you so much for your for your support of, of us and our team. I also wanted to share some really exciting news. I heard you've been season ticket holder. You don't have to worry about paying for those tickets next year because they're on the house. No. Oh yeah, oh yeah, We're, you've won the, the competition and uh, oh my God. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, next year, 2024, you guys are going to 
be able to go to all our home games uh, for free. So, I mean, your continued support wow. is, uh, has paid off. Looking forward to having a good year next year with you in the stands. Well, thank you so much. That is just amazing. Yeah, I'm so glad I got to share the information with you. Well, thanks so much. That's exciting. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm so excited for you guys. Okay, thank you. Make sure to watch the game Sunday. Go Titans. Go Titans. We've got more with Will Levis coming up, but I need to remind you now that it's always game on with Duncan. So grab a coffee and kick off the action, whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before listening at home. Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual. It's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. Will, all right. What would Will Levis of today tell the Will Levis of draft night when you're sitting in that green room that you wish that Will Levis would have known that night? What would help him? That he's not getting picked in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> At least I could have, would have saved me some stress, some time maybe, no, but. Um, <laughs> That's good. No, I would tell him to, you know, just trust the process and that this is what was meant for you. And despite it kind of feeling as screwy as it did when it, when it did all happen, that, uh, you know, a couple months from now, you're going to realize that you're in the right spot and uh, that the people, you're here because the people want you and they love you. And um, that would have kept me at ease. I definitely thought I had a little bit jacked up mindset when it was first happened at that time, but I was able to, to flip it there pretty soon after. But um, could have gone or could have at least um, gained a few hours of sleep that night if I was able to get my mind um, a little more clear. All right, five rapid fire questions to end this thing. Are you ready? Yes. Nashville experience that you have not had yet that will happen in 2024. Oof. Troubadour. I want to go out and play golf at uh, Troubadour. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Hidden talent that you possess that you're proud of. I can sing. I have a decent singing voice. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna just do it right now. Time and place for sure. But I feel like I can, uh, I can belt some things out when it, when it's necessary. All right. Golf course, not the Troubadour. Golf course that you dream of playing. Augusta for sure. Augusta, or uh, I'd say Payne, Payne Valley, Tigers Course in Missouri. It's pretty cool. They got that floating uh, 19th green. Nice. Played it on a simulator before. I want to play it in real life. In real life. You can now. Yeah. Favorite condiment outside of mayonnaise? Oof. I'm going to say... I got it. It's basic, but I'm going to go ranch. I think ranch. there's a lot of, uh, you know, variations of it that you can... Uh, Make it a little different. But like jalapeno ranch. Jalapeno ranch, chipotle ranch, you know, a, a lot of different combinations. Like right, the last one, celebrity that you have been most excited to meet since joining the Tennessee Titans. That I haven't met? That you've met. Ooh. Who's somebody famous you've met? Since joining the Titans, um, I'd, I'd met him briefly before, but when we were out in L.A., me and Tajay, for the rookie premiere shortly before camp, I got to spend some time with Tom Brady. And uh, he, he was my idol growing up, you know, being a big Pats fan and uh, the, being the greatest of all time. I, you know, I was able to ask him questions, and he was incredible. And he's definitely one of those dudes that, you know, I'm just starstruck by when I see him. Well, we're thrilled you're here. Uh, it is so much fun watching you play and Titans fans all over, excited about the rest of this year. We're not giving up anything, but certainly excited about what's to come. Will Levis, thank you so much for the Thanks time. Thanks so much, Mike. All right. That's this edition of the OTP. Thanks for joining us.